ये समाज के बेतों के सवालों से दबी हुई है मेरी आवाज ये समाज के बेतों के सवालों से जाने क्यों हो गई पराई में ये समाज के बढ़ते फासलों से ये नहीं है मेरी कहानी ये नहीं है मेरी कहानी ये कहानी है पूरे समाज की ये कहानी है पूरे समाज की हैवानियत में लिपटे हुए चेहरे हैवानियत में लिपटे हुए चेहरे ये समस्या है पूरे समाज की ये समस्या है पूरे समाज की हेलो फैमिली नमस्कार यू माइट हैव ऑब्जर्व इन द वीडियो वीडियो वाज नॉट प्लेइंग प्रॉपरली आई एम सो सॉरी अबाउट इट देयर इज सम टेक्निकल ग्लिच द वीडियो वाज ट्राइंग टू कन्वे इज आई हैव डन द सोशल एक्सपेरिमेंट बिफोर फ्यू डेज व्हेन आई स्टार्टेड माय प्रोजेक्ट आई स्टफ डिफरेंट पोस्टर्स इन डिफरेंट एरिया ऑफ राजकोट and the only core objective behind it was i wanted to see people's reaction what are they reacting towards the issue so as you might have seen in the video which was not played that be everybody was just passing by nobody even looked at me neither the poster at any given point or area i have tried this at multiple times in morning and in afternoon and in different areas so it was not even that i was just standing at a place and only one place was been observed so same way our society is ignorant about the social issues like child abuse and it is rightly said that there is nothing more frightful than ignorance in the society do you all agree yes i would just like to ask you one slight question uh, we all love children can you tell me why do we love children anyone which is of the nonsense but while the process we will see that everybody is not that blessed to have such kind of child my core objective of the presentation today is awareness to make people aware about what is child abuse what are the strategies for intervention prevention and treatment of the child abuse as well as the same time by the end of the presentation i will be talking about the solutions to the parents society as a whole and as a teacher what can we do Sadly, child abuse is like COVID-19. Until and unless it happens to your child or somebody from your family, then and then only you will take it seriously. What is child abuse really? Any and every kind of mistreatment towards a child is child abuse. Be it emotional, physical, or psychological, or neglect even. Who can cause child abuse? it can be anybody it can be you me parents siblings relatives friends or strangers 90% of the research says that it is a pedophile or a accused person is known to the victim is known to the victim kindly ma'am some statistics from who who is the organization world health organization i hope you all are aware about it The organization recently stated that three in four children, or we can say three hundred million children worldwide, on regular basis face physical punishment by the parents or the caregivers. One in five women and one in thirteen men have reported that they were being sexually harassed or abused in the age of zero to seventeen. Around forty to one fifty cases of homicides regularly happens every year. some data from ncrb ncrb is national crime record bureau uh, the data is very recent it's from 2021 it states that around 149000 of cases were registered for the crime against children out of which 53000 cases were been registered of pokso which is a sexual abuse so it's around 36 percent my friends and the states where the cases were recorded high were mumbai tamil nadu Madhya Pradesh, etc. It's not such that in our societies laws does not exist; they exist. But it, the problem only arises when it comes to reporting and execution and implementation of the laws. UNICEF has entrained the laws into the four areas when it comes to child protection. But for the project, we are going to focus on the two. The first one is Pokso, and second one is Capta. Pokso came into 2012. the main agenda for pokso was that they have to keep the children in trust first they punish everyone who is accused of being harassing the child in a touch or non touch based crime um uh, it came and it enacted on the november 14 2012 
Even Pauxo arranges uh, special courts when there is a hearing for a case for a case of a child abuse, be it it's a physical, sexual, etc. Because we know uh, giving the verdict or the cases in our judiciary takes a lot of time. CAPT Act originally came into January 31, 1974. It was again reauthorized and amended for several times. Recently, it was amended on January 7, 2019. My research methodology is case study based. I have taken case studies, interviews, etc. So let's talk about the case one. The case one is from Chennai, from a girl Chennai. The name is anonymous for the obvious reason. The girl was being abused from the age of 5 to the age of 17. And it was a family inflicted abuse by parents. At the age of 5, it was physical abuse when the girl was being bitten on the left hand for being the left-handed person. On the age of 10 again, it was, it was a physical abuse. The girl was then bitten until her skin paid off because she didn't score good marks. At the age of again 12, it was emotional abuse. She was then um, caught by bunking one of her tuition classes and she was then locked up in the room for three days without any food and water. Can you imagine the atrocity the girl might have gone through? At the age of 15, it was physical abuse and at the age of 17, it was emotional abuse again. At the age of 15, uh, and 17, the reason was similar. The girl was then caught holding what's in the hand. But we will see that whenever a child is suffering from something like this, they crave for the love from outside. Right? So, in the last case, in the emotional abuse, she was then called slut. She was then called, she was then told that you should go and live in a whole house, not here. Uh, I would like to quote here that she was a prisoner of her childhood. She tried to create a new life. But always she recounters her wrongs. My case two is from Article 14, a law firm. Uh, the case study is for Deboli Nasaha, a girl from Darjeeling. The abuse started at the age of 14 and the abuse was sexual. Deboli was extremely good in her academics. It was by a science tutor who was coming into place, who was trusted by her parents. It started with a side hug. She thought it is nothing to be talked about, gradually it will stop. But it converted into digital rape. Digital rape, my friends, is nothing related to the virtual reality we live in. It is related to an accuser penetrating his finger and a thumb on a girl's vagina forcefully. 23 years the girl didn't spoke. 23 years the case didn't come out. After that, she appeared to the court because other girls were facing the same. But it is well said that justice delayed is justice denied. My first interview was with Arun Mahesh Babu sir, our collector. I asked him several questions. The questions were this. According to him, uh, we should teach our children uh, value education, more value education rather than only focusing on curriculum and theoretical things. We should teach our children self-defense. We should teach them to speak up and on speak up when there is a right moment. He even advised to parents, teachers and society he said, we are here for you if anything happens. My interview too is a little closer to my heart because uh, it's somebody I know personally. The abuse started at the age of 10. The person is currently, currently at the age of 35, my friends. So other than me, when I was asking the question, I was completely sure. The abuse was physical, emotional, economical and neglect. The person is not having still a good life. It has impacted him in various ways. He never had a normal schooling, normal life. He has become completely antisocial. He is always craving for the love from outside. At the age of 10, he himself was not aware what is to be done. But he has advised that if you face anything like this, call one zero nine, And they will help He, uh, I asked him, like, does it get better with the time? Because it's easy to ask, you know, sometimes. But the person said that I have lost my childhood and time always does not heal everything. Types of child abuse, by now I think you are aware, it's physical, sexual, emotional and neglect. Neglect is the most difficult one to be identified because it is something of not doing rather than doing. 
symptoms, a child not participating in the usual activities, a child refraining from coming to the school, a child is completely scared of unusual thing, things which are happening in the society, a child is facing confidence issues which is very uh, common these days and we generally blame the child for not speaking up. Some symptom specific uh, signs which you as an educator should know. Physical, if there are any unexplained injuries to a child, which he is saying and not matching with the explanation. If it's emotional, it can be depression, it can be loss of self-esteem, etc. If it's a sexual abuse, it can be gentle pain, and etc. If it's a neglect sign, it can be stealing of the food, it can be poor or health hygiene, or it can be poor uh, growth of a child. But again, my friends, it is not something that the signs always indicate child abuse. It can be any other issue also which a child is going through. So please be vigilant. And as I told you earlier, that I'll be even taking you towards the causes and solutions. So there are many causes. It can be domestic violence. It can be untreated mental illness. It can be lack of parenting skills. It can be also stress and lack of support. But any, whatever the cause is or reason is, there is no excuse to child abuse. None. If you are a parent, this is for you. Educate yourself. Educate your child. Examine their behavior. See what they are going through. Nurture them. Talk to them. Talk to them about their child's right and report whenever required. Rather than having the mindset of log kya kahenge, report. It will be helpful. If you are a teacher, this is for you. Uh, examine the child's behavior because they are here for six to seven hours with us. Talk to the parents. Encourage them to give the knowledge to a child about child. Talk to children in a friendly way about child abuse. Even create seminars or studies or talk to them just maybe in a friendly way what is child abuse. Then even train them and tell them what are the steps to report. Even I would tell you as a society what we can do. If we see any child who is facing any such thing and we are a third party, we should first ourselves keep calm and comfort. We should help them to connect with the professionals rather than us giving all the advice. Even we should be the first one to not shy away and report the case. Then, and in law, lawfully, if we see in every uh, city, the scenarios may be different. But here, you can directly report to the police and call one zero nine as the collector, sorry, even guided me. Daily, my friends, we are sitting here today at 106 cases of child abuse getting reported. 106. And you can imagine, we have 30 to 31 days, the amount of cases. And these cases are the registered cases we are talking about. Only registered one. The Both the cases we talked about, out of which one was unregistered and one didn't get the justice. My, uh, for the solution, Gandhiji has rightly said, be the change you want to see in the world. You start. Take the first step. My awareness campaign includes two parts. One was digital and one was the offline. The first one is the, the social media page, The Lost Innocence. It is an open account even you can see. Uh, only the post, what the post has not required, seeing the engagement of the audience. Uh, the motive was to make people aware because majorly people are using Instagram these days. Even I conducted this quizzes. And in that also, responses were satisfying. So at least we have a real hope, hope that some of the people are aware about this, something happening like this. My awareness campaign even included offline, where I talked to two schools. One was Sri Sri Academy, and one was Greenwood International School, in which uh, I conducted 45-minute seminar. I talked to children about what is not abuse and what is abuse. Because when you're talking to them, sometimes they may feel that everything is abuse. So that also is required to be told to them that what is not abuse. Then even I talk to teachers personally to guide them about what is right and wrong. Because one of the child told me, uh, he was just in third grade. I was not even conducting a seminar for him. But he came and told me that one of my teacher has put cellotape on my face. Whether that's an abuse or not. So you can imagine what kind of questions the child might have as well. My final thoughts. Uh, Include I have faith, that's why I'm here today. 
and with faith we can get it through. Childhood should be a child which is carefree and playing in the sun and not having a darkness in the soul. These were my differences. And I want to especially thank TV Sir for helping me with the interview with Collector Sir and the organizations who allowed me for the sessions to be conducted. And I just wanted to ask you one thing. Uh, if if you are here with me, just say we are here for you. If you are here with me, just say we are here for you. We are here for you. Thank you so much. Wonderful, madam. Outstanding. Excellent. हर आदमी में होते हैं दस बीस आदमी हर आदमी में होते हैं दस बीस आदमी जिनको भी देख जिसको भी देखना बार बार देखना हर आदमी में होते हैं दस बीस आदमी जिसको भी देखना बार बार देखना आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड प्योर क्वेश्चन question yes it is Recording the camera, even uh, maybe it is 
uh, found that they are forcing behind the camera to do this kind of things with the children that you have to act like this. So, okay, because they are, they are at the end, if we are, someone is questioning them in the comments and then, so they are uh, telling that they are, they are our own kids. He is my own kid. So, I know what is parenting and all. So, they are, uh, so can we consider this as a child abuse? No, sir. According to me, parenting is very subjective. Okay. Now, if a child is, we, we don't know, as you as a viewer, don't know that if a child has been forced. It might be his talent, which the parents are helping him to showcase on a social media platform. You see, there are many talent shows which are coming up, okay, in which you can see the kids doing wonders. And it might be a thing, the kid might know, I'm not saying everybody, but a kid might not be good in the academics, but if he's good in that, why not? Okay, so according to me, it's very subjective, but again, there might be cases where, ch where children have been neglected and forced to be do so. So if they are forced, it's an abuse. Because every time it's said that elderly are correct, but elderly are always correct, it's not true, according to me. Because in the vlogging, they are showing their uh, life, not, it is not related to... Obviously, the BTS behind the scenes are not being shown. Mm. Uh, I, underst I understood your question. That's what I'm trying to say. That's very subjective. So if we come to know, even we can report it, that if it's an abuse, but we cannot definitely say that <coughs> all the influencers are the abusers. Thank you. We cannot just generalize the term, you know. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as you mentioned, if we all know that, uh, who abuse? Known person. Most of the time? Most, most of the time, yes. Yeah. So, generally parents go to get this suppress the matter to save the family's reputation. So, in this situation, child feels more death, horrible. Yesterday also I mentioned the same thing. So, as a parent, we teach them what is good touch, what is bad touch, what is abuse, what is not. But as, a, as, as parents, we, somewhere we fail to teach them that to make them assure that we are with you if anything happens. Definitely ma'am, that's what my point is. Thank you for asking. See, many a times what happens, we are in the notion of low category. That's why sometimes child is free to call once he don't it. But parents might not allow him to do so. Because kisi ko bhi aisa nahi chahiye ki ghar pe police hai. Isn't it? Because what will the society think? What will the society say? And many a times the emotional and the neglect cases does not come out. Because it's very difficult to judge. So there are many NGOs working towards it and even as a parents, the teacher should, means as a teacher or as a school, should take an initiative to counsel parents. So they should know that there are certain laws which we have been bided by. If we do so and if a child speaks out, means to somebody else, we can be going to the jail for a few years. So there should be fear first. And awareness, definitely. Yes, Krunal sir. You clearly mentioned about the child rights, right? right juvenile and all. In which there was one right, a uh, child labor in 2016. Yes. As you are a SS teacher, I am also a SS. I, yeah. I want to know there was uh, one right in a history for the special child. Can you please uh, Especially for? Especially for child. I'm not aware about that. I'm sorry. If you are aware, please enlighten me with the name so everybody can. There was a factory in 1881 in which the child related uh, those who are specially there. Okay. Women and child work. Thank you, thank you so much for the information. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, ma'am, you mentioned that as a society, we should, na, if we come across such kind of cases, we should report. But what if the you know, child's parents already know and they have chosen to keep quiet? That's what they I'm saying. They don't want the case to come out like as you know, Hila Madam said, because for the family's reputation. We should not, like I feel that, you know, it is a contradictory thing from your side, right? No, we should not report if they are not willing to. See ma'am, as I said, I understood the question. That's what I answered to ma'am as well. See, as an individual, we are also a citizen to a yeah. country. Okay. And uh, what your conscience is saying to you, it's up to you. Humanity does not say that your parents are not allowing to do so, so you also don't do a good cause. No, not okay. my parents. No, I'm just giving an example. Right? It's not about you. It's a generalized thing. Okay. If, for example, today a child's parents are not willing to report, obviously because of the societal pressure. Okay. I, even I ask this because I came across so many case studies where children, when parents are forcing to register children in false case against the father or mother because they are divorced. So you can understand the replications of the cases which are coming into the area today. Okay, so what you as an ordinary citizen can do, even you can contact an NGO. There are many NGOs working. 
And even if you anonymous want to even register a complaint, you can. Okay? So if you don't want to be the bad person, okay, I'm just, it's not about you, it's a generalized thing. I being a bad person is not at all a problem. Like no. If it is helping the child. Obviously. But my only just point goes Because like, parents are not willing. That's what I said, madam. Elderlies are why uh -huh. children are not an asset to parents. Yes. Okay. So if you think it's bad, you can definitely do it. हमको तो अपनों ने लूटा घेरों में कहा इतना दम था हमको तो अपनों ने लूटा घेरों में कहा इतना दम था मेरी कस्ती वहीं डूबी यस हेरम सर Completely refrain from slapping a child or yeah, harming a child. Yes. Yeah. Like you spoke about very kind of with this physical, sexual, like emotional, like yeah, right. Now my question to you is, uh, since we are Indians and our Indian culture, we we feel the need to slap a child once in a while to get them on the right track. Now how <laughs> how extensive should the abuse be to to constitute as child abuse? Sir, like, abuse. I I got your question. Yeah. Because the child can also sometimes misuse this act. Like many times, there are the pros and cons. Sir, uh, see, according to me, not because I'm just presenting this, I, I come from a family or a background where I have never seen this. But uh, for for me, going through this was very difficult because I've never even been slapped or rather have seen something like this. To be honest, okay. Uh, according to me, an abuse is when even you slap to a child for once. I definitely understand your area when you're saying a child can dial 1098 and say my parents have been abused are abusing me. But see, we should definitely indicate the society or make them aware about what when to stop and what are the repercussions of the things you are doing. I have observed a case here in our school even, I don't want to name the child or a grade, okay, where the child has been from starting from one slap to child has been always being, you know, slapped or rather been kicked, etc. And now, whatever you tell to the child, he'll be like, I have no fear. You can do whatever, you can do whatever. What, what is the highest thing or what is the extra, extreme thing you're going to do? Clapping and money to leave. So that, that thing starts with the one slap. So we should know when to stop it. Yeah. Your question. On this note, <coughs> on this note, sir, uh, we must see Russell Peters. Uh, yes, yes. Exactly. Then, on that note, sir, we must see Russell Peters. Yes, yes. Exactly. Then, on that note, sir, we must see Russell Peters. Yes, yes. Exactly. Then, on that note, sir, we must see Russell Peters. Yes, yes. Exactly. Then, on that note, sir, we must see Russell Peters. Yes, yes. Exactly. Then, on that note, sir, we must see Russell Peters. Yes, yes. Exactly. Then, on that note, sir, we must see Russell Peters. Yes, yes. Exactly. Then, on that note, sir, we must see Russell Peters. Yes, yes. Exactly. Then, on that note, sir, we must see uh, my uh, question is, so uh, we get the background, uh, we get the information, very informative. What was the study? What, what is the objective of the study? And what is the conclusion of it? Okay. So my objective of study was to spread awareness because I came, uh, the interview, second interview I have done here is the person I knew. So we were just having a random conversation one day through which the idea came to my mind that there are many cases which are been registered. So my only objective, the core objective was to spread awareness. Uh, but in our research methodology, we are supposed to select either a survey or a case study. So that's why I've been, uh, I represented my area with a case study. And my outcome is there are many people now today aware. I have been uh, presenting this from quarter for now. So from quarters to semis till today, to the live audience, even to the institutions I went, the outcome is that at least that many people are aware about the cause and they are at least knowing what is child abuse, what are the do's and don'ts. So I have achieved my outcome at a certain extent. And I'm not going to stop it after today yeah. because today is a finale. I'm going to continue. Thank you. Ma'am, have you yourself dialed 1098? 1098? No, ma'am. I haven't, but I know uh, the person who has died and they have got this. Immediately help them. Yeah. Uh, the second interview, again, which uh, the person himself is an educator. A girl was suffering from an abusive father. The person has died 1098 and they have helped the girl. Because once I died 181, which is a Manila helpline number, though for a very small matter, but they kept me waiting for seven long minutes. Definitely, ma'am. The system. Sometimes, at times. So I just hope they will give me the Secondly, I would have loved if we would have 
spread awareness to parents as well, not only to the children or schools? Uh, I wanted to start it from a ground root level, ma'am, here, because just I'm not just interrupting, I'm just answering to your question. I even talked to teachers. And you won't believe as a society still we have a taboo about sex education. When I was uh, approaching the schools, uh, after only these two schools have allowed me, I approached almost 10 schools. I won't name them, but uh, I told them that I want to conduct a seminar on the abuse. They, def they denied me. They think that talking even about an abuse or even sex education is a taboo in society. So it's very difficult. Definitely if genius will allow me, so in future I'll conduct parent seminar as well. Yes, actually, uh, you know the lack of liberal mentality. Yeah, the mindset. And that's that I do agree with this because this is the main major problem in education society. We attend lot of workshops, lot of workshops, but there is no implication. I have attended so many workshops in my 21 years of teaching experience, but how many we have implemented? The people, those who are charging 40,000, 50,000, very frankly speaking, they are earning. We are for one session, whole day we are spending, but next day onwards, what we are implementing. This is very important. What you say is very correct. That the schools, uh, many schools are not showing that interest. They think that yes, child abuse is something different. Sir, and in the case uh, of Devoli Saha, uh, uh, there were many schools where the person, Mr. Roja, was working. Um, and no school, sir, it was more than 20 schools. No school backed up what Devanina was trying to say. Just because their reputation was at stake. In one of the schools, I advise that why not the, those who are practically experienced the classroom problems, situations, they can conduct some workshops along with the professionals. So both of them can combine together, experience, uh, share their experience with each other. They conduct one that will prove. That, ma'am, you say that Foxo, uh, uh, Foxo, uh, this this Foxo. Uh, uh, do you know that we have a committee in the school, Foxo committee? Okay. Yeah. Uh, then, according to. Are you following up regularly about uh, this committee? Because you are so. Yes, so we are live right now, so I should not talk about our school, but uh, generally, if we see the schools, they no, have I, a committee. I am just asking your contribution. <coughs> your contribution. I think no, sir. We are not following. And that you need to. You are answering the evening, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And ma'am, ma sir, you have talked about many NGOs. Uh, could you please name some of the NGOs so that we can be getting some help? Yeah, in uh, the case study which I took for the from Devolina Sa was from Rajini. A mark NGO is there which have helped even Devolina uh, after the 25 years even to talk about it more. Even if we talk about the Rajkot, we have Rotary Club which is working for adults and plus uh, the children and we have another organization called Parivartan. And uh, what uh, one gentleman was asking about uh, child abuse of girls and you corrected it immediately for everyone. everyone. Very important. Even the boys also. Uh, that's what sir, my only objective is to make, to be a bridge between the information which has been circulated in this society. Because we saw the WHO is directly saying 1 in 14 men. Mm -hmm. So it's not such that they are not overall there. I, I was studying one case study where even a boy was been sexually abused by the family member who was by one of the, his elder cousins. So you can understand the boy was just been, you know, told that it's very impure to talk about. You can understand. Captain, sir. Multiple goosebumps. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Multiple times. Anything else, sir? A work of art. It's not a presentation, it's a work of art. I'm, I'm glad, sir. Uh, just wanted to tell you one thing, the lost innocence, kindly please follow it so we can reach as many as people we can. And we should not stop it here. Uh, I am an educator, so are you. So definitely we can bring a change. Thank you so much. Everybody, everybody, follow me. Everybody, that is follow.